Alright guys, before I start, just gotta remind you that tomorrow we're doing the critique stream and we've switched the Patreon around so that you can join at any moment and instantly get perks and stuff. So if you want your art critiqued tomorrow, you, you have until the stream to be able to do that. So yeah, check that out. Link above right now. Bloop bloop. Okay, so subplots. Subplots confuse a lot of people. I would know. I get confused by subplots all the time. And while they are actually quite simple to understand as a concept, in practice they can be very, very messy, which can be both really fun and really frustrating at the same time. So today I'm going to go over the basics of subplots and some techniques on how to manage them, or at least how I manage them. First and foremost, to write a subplot, you need to know how to write a plot. I have a video that I will link right now if you haven't watched it, it's been up there for a while now, but it goes into the basics of plot structure and it goes real in depth, so check that out before you proceed here if you haven't already or if you don't already have an understanding of how plotting works. So subplots follow that exact same formula as any other plot and it's really good to be familiar with the basics. With that understood, then what? What makes a subplot distinct? Well, it's the size, it's the focus that it's given. Subplots are often given kind of less time and are more reliant on the main plot than the main plot is reliant on them. However, I don't actually think think that it's really worth worrying about. You know, you don't have to get into like which plot is more important than the next. Sometimes it's fun to like consider that, but you really don't need to go that in depth with that. You can go back and forth on figuring that out all the time and it's not really going to help your writing much at all. What is important is identifying the existence of plots in the first place. It's surprisingly easy for some of us to add a plot to our stories and not even realize it's there neglect it, let it die, disappoint all our readers. How do you do that? By adding conflict. And if you're really good at adding conflict, it happens a lot. There are many ways in which conflict is added to a story. It can be a character conflict, a mystery, an event. If you casually drop something like this, you've inadvertently made a subplot. Whatever it is, you need to be aware of it and the problems that you've kind of created and added to your story. And you need to be aware of it whether you're editing or while you're outlining. Each time something like this is added, you are adding a plot. You need a beginning, a middle, an end for every conflict. Okay, maybe not every conflict. Sometimes you can just say like, well, we're not solving this. It, it better not be a big one if you're going to do that, I guess. Sometimes it's kind of like a very quick within the scene sort of conflict that's easily resolved and is still technically a subplot, but, but it's less so than what I'm talking about right now. Other times it will extend to the end of the story and that's what I'm talking about when I talk about subplots. In the cases where you realize that this plot will extend end, well that's when things become tricky. These are the plots that will most likely be considered subplots, like I've said five times already, and the ones that you will likely get headaches dealing with. So how do you deal with them? Well, the first step is identifying them which I just said, and you know, that's a perfect place to start. You can't address a problem until you admit there's a problem. And if you're someone who doesn't outline, this is kind of where your job ends. Well, at least it's where it ends until you get into the editing stage. But the first thing I make sure to do is write out every single plot, every single conflict, and just see it. Um, the next step for managing your subplots happens in the form of an outline, and you do this either before you write or after you are finished writing, if you are someone who goes by the seat of their pants. Consider each plot separately as its own unique thing, as if it was its own story, completely separate. They should have all of the plot points that are discussed in the Plot 101 video, and they should be solid stories on their own. And if you're well practiced in plotting, this should be pretty easy. The next part is where you weave your plot threads together to create like a cohesive story. When you see the plots written out, it becomes a lot easier to start 
start tying everything together. Make special note of plot points that can happen close together or simultaneously. As long as everything is clear, having large events happen together, especially around like midpoints and climaxes, that can create kind of amazingly impactful moments. Consider how different events can be the catalyst for other plot points. And this is exceptionally difficult to do without an outline, which is why outlining is so important because plots are so messy and subplots are ridiculously messy and you need some basic level of outline for this. But I guess like it's not impossible to go without an outline, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it, whether it's in the editing stage or as you are going. For me, I like to write out all of this and then I start to write out plot points and generally start making like a master plot sheet that happens chronologically to explain what's going to happen in the story. And as I write, I find out where more scenes are needed to explain things, to set up different plot points, or where more plot ends up being added if necessary. Of course, like all of this is changeable. Like I have a very fluid outline, but it's good to have to keep me on track and keep me aware of what I am building up to. But keeping on track of all of it is by far the most important step and the most important aspect of managing subplots. One more thing, start small. Um, you can go as big as you want. Like you can make huge epic stories with dozens of plot arcs and threads. You, you can do that, but I, I wouldn't recommend it as your first story endeavor. The more plot threads you add, the harder you're going to make things for yourself, so just hold back a little bit. Um, I would really recommend like two to five plot threads when you start making comics. Like, just do something short. And by short, I mean 100 pages, which doesn't sound short, but I just mean short for a long form piece, you know? Like, like a mid-sized project before you go straight into your giant epic. Because I need to remind you guys this like a million times over, but comics take a really long time to make. And if you make something that is like... 3,000 pages, it's going to take you 10 years. You might want to do that when you have a little more like skills under your belt to make it as good as you want it. So seriously, like consider, at least consider a two to five plot thread story before your epic. And if you absolutely have to do your epic, like I, I can't stop you and you'll still learn tons and have a great time. Don't worry about it. But I, I, I beg of you, like for, for your own sanity consider it. Yeah, so that's all I have to say about subplots. I'll be back next week to talk about something. I don't know what. I haven't really quite decided yet. It's been hectic here. I had to like not stream this week because right now my roommate is moving out and I don't know what's going on. So eh, it's just it's 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 been hectic. So like I went on like an adventure. I, f I feel like I haven't talked to you. So this is me talking to you right now about my my life. So I went on a great epic adventure yesterday. I went on a bus because the other day I saw people like earlier in the week, I saw people get on a bus and I'm like, man, I really want to get on a bus and just go to a place because like I miss being on buses. I don't know why I want to go on a bus adventure. So I went on a bus and I went to the uh, fish store, <laughs> which was quite fun. I like I've been trying to set up a fish tank. I'm cycling it right now which is trouble. It's like my first fish tank. I've never really, I've never done the fish thing. Like I did it when I was a kid, but like I had like a two and a half gallon tank and it was like really gross and terrible. Um, so now it's my first official fish tank and I'm waiting for like springtime to actually happen in order to get a fish in there. Also for my tank to cycle because it's kind of nasty right now. It's, it's all ammonia. <laughs> So let's hope that happens. Like I ordered stuff on Amazon and it's just not showing up and it's driving me crazy a little bit. Um, so yeah, I went on that adventure and speaking of fish, I get into weird like 
I, I get into we, like hyper focus. It's basically hyper focus where I just get really interested in like one specific thing. So I've just been really into fish right now. So that's my thing. And so before this video, I was just I was just chilling, watching goldfish videos, seeing them swim about and be all cute and stuff, and looking at all the different like breeds. I guess I, I don't know if they're breeds. I, I don't really understand goldfish all that much. But I was looking at them, and they were all so cute, and they were all so distracting. I'm like, man, today's such a chill day to just watch YouTube videos. And then I was like, oh, crud, I actually have things to do today. I have to, to make a video. So that's what happened before I got here. Anyways, so I went to the pet store yesterday. I bought some like water conditioner and stuff because I needed it for Al anyway, Al being my lizard. And so I went and I did that. And then I then I went to Michael's to just look at stuff and I had to really stop myself from buying a, th a thousand piece puzzle of like these orcas because I really like doing puzzles. I'm like, man, doing a puzzle would be fun. See, I'm very easy to distract. I'm like, you just show me something shiny. You show me a puzzle. I'm like, yes, give me, let me do that. But I have puzzles at home. So I should, I decided maybe I should just do puzzles at home, but I'm, I'm not going to do puzzles. So I'm staring at a puzzle right now because I have my puzzle collection. I'm going to be a puzzle boy. Oh my god. Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, I went to Michael's, and then Ursula was like, I'll pick you up after work. So I was like, okay, I'll just wait at Michael's. And after that, I met her at the Pet Smart because I was looking at like dog stuff. And I almost bought onesies for my dogs because I really want them to have like cute little onesie PJs. But I want like Christmas ones. So I, I stopped myself from spending like $40 on a onesie set but I did end up buying like um one of those cat water fountains because I want to encourage my cats to drink because I have a male cat and I don't want them to get like I don't want to get them I don't want them to get urinary like tract infections that'd be terrible so I got him that and I also bought like uh cat food for them I guess did I do anything else there I think that was all I impulse bought. Oh, I also bought worms for Al so he could eat some worms because he's a good boy and he deserves worms. I should feed him after this. Okay, this is such a ramble. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. I'm trying to be more rambly. I said this last time, but I'm just trying to give you guys like some extra rambles at the end. Up until the point where I finally start my vlog channel. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on the vlog thing. I'm trying to get like a fancy as frick camera. I've always really wanted a nice camera because I haven't played with one. In forever and I don't want to just spend all my money on kind of like a cheap camera I'd rather just wait and get like a nice one that I can take nice pictures with yeah yeah I guess that's fine uh, yeah I want to take nice pictures and I want to take nice pictures of my animals because they're my life if you couldn't tell anyways so uh I go home and speaking of animals um, Madoka, my dog, was a freaking monster and she ate a copy of Nine Point. Like, I'd left it on the table because I have... Nine Point is, like, our comic. I, I guess I can link to, like, where you can buy it. But Madoka ate a copy of it. It was ripped up. She's... She's great. She enjoyed every bit of it. Ugh, she just... If I leave paper stuff on the table within chomp range, she'll, like, sneakily take it while we're gone. So, it's, it's on me. It's not her fault. She just loves cardboard and stuff. She is like ripping it and eating it. She likes like paper towel rolls and like toilet paper rolls. Like she tries to sneak them out of the bathroom. She's such a monster. Like I'm, I have a monster dog. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all my animal adventures. I don't know what I'm going to do today. I want to go on another adventure, but I also don't want to spend a bunch of money because like I've been kind of sad honestly this week. I've been having some really like logy times because it's, it's like, Things are changing, but they're not, like, completely changed, which is always really hard for me. And I've been missing streaming, which is also hard. Oh, someone texted me. But, like, yeah, I want to get back into the swing of my life. But, I, but also when I'm sad, I tend to buy things. So maybe I'll do some cleaning up today because I'm going to be moving into my roommate's old room. And I'm excited. I want to set it up and make it all stream ready so that you guys can see something different in the background of Twitch. So there you go. That's all that. I hope to see you again. Yeah, I hope to see you guys again some other time. Yeah, those were that was a lot of subplots to my life. Um, organize those into a nice plot graph for me, guys. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Have fun writing and have fun doing your art. 
10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 goodbye, actually, this time.